So, I am back. After about two or three years of not building Venture Pods, won't go into the reasons why. Took a little time off, figured I had to build most of it myself going forward, and now I have the time in my life to do that. And uh, kind of wanted to go back to the original idea of something like this. Um, if you've seen my other ones in the past, they had that dome on it. But this is much simpler, easier to tow, weighs a little less, and uh, really accomplishes the same thing as one with the dome. Um, Price-wise, it's going to be less money by quite a bit. That dome was uh, pretty expensive to actually build and get that done. So I'm at uh, Forlorn Lakes up by Goose Lake here in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest, mid-October. And literally, I just pulled up and took me a couple minutes just to unhook it and pull it in here and lower it down to its fairly level. Um, and that's it as far as it kind of getting it into its place. This uh, new Venture Pod, before I had the rack tied into the body, and this time I'm actually the whole trailer frame and axle and fenders is all one unit along with that. Uh, uh, rack. It's all integrated in the same. It's really strong. It's all steel, not aluminum. It really didn't add that much weight to the trailer. And uh, I just like it a lot better. And uh, that body, I build, you know, away from the trailer frame and then just attach it after I'm done with it. So I like that. I'm waiting for some pretty cool aluminum, black aluminum wheels to come in with a little higher tire. That's about a 29 inch tire and it's going to be about a 30 inch tire um i also have a from moonshade a really cool awning that's coming that's not here yet so as soon as i get those i'm going to go out and take more pictures with those things i haven't put a rooftop tent on this but it will accommodate that and very nicely a lot stronger than what i had before for that being up there or the original idea was it was for your kayaks and uh canoes and uh and paddle boards to go up on top but there's also if you go ahead and put uh, a tent on top we have a place for the kayaks to rest here and you'll see a chain loop up here that you can just tie off your kayak on the side here over your doors so you can have the rooftop tent on this the way it's set up and still have two kayaks on the sides if you wish so it's pretty versatile what you want to do with it um, so we got the water heater like we did before on the back. There's a plug to plug this in when you get home to charge up the battery. This side again is the cargo side. I've got my stuff thrown in there. It actually holds a lot of gear. You can't really see the panels really well, but they, they actually all come off. Um, actually kind of some little secret compartment compartments in there if you wanted to hide some things um, but mainly it's for the function is that you can take them off to get to work on the utility side of this if you had to get in there if you did have a uh, electrical problem or something you had to get in there and fix after a while um, you'd be able to get in there pretty easily and do that you just have to crawl through this hole which I managed to do and then over here on this end is the basic the electrical panel I'll call it um, um, on the right is a marine Bluetooth radio, and then the charger's up on top. Down below this button, down below is for the water heater, and the other one is just a control panel. I've got the water pump hooked up to that, and the radio hooked up to that. There's also four empty spots there. If somebody wanted to add in other electrical parts to this, they could wire that in and have those buttons available to them. And it's got a cigarette lighter um, for charging and a USB charger on it too so i don't know if you could hear the water pump kick on and the bluetooth comes on which unfortunately i'd play some music but i can't do it why i'm filming on my phone it doesn't allow me to do that i'll just keep the water pump on and uh go around the front we got the propane the battery up here um Lots of storage up front to throw some uh, firewood in there if you want to, whatever. 
So essentially when you pull up, you can just open the propane tank, get the propane flowing. And then there's your water fill over there. And those two other things on either side are actually Bluetooth speakers. At night, they actually have a little cool blue light illuminating through them. Um, I won't be able to see that today. And this side is our galley. There's a little battery-operated light. I'm not so down with that right at the moment, but it's the best I could find. I know they're out there in the world. Some places a lot better um, set up for that. But I don't have it right now, and I will get one. This sink is a huge sink for any kind of any kind of trailer, but especially for something this small to have a sink this big. It's deep. It's big enough to put big pans in there and actually wash them. Um, so I was really looking for something like this, and it worked out pretty good. I also have this... Uh, marine fold down uh, faucet and that had to be because of the way the not having the dome up above but it actually works really really well lots of water coming out i haven't turned the hot water on yet i'll do that in a few minutes and then we got the stove which i was lucky to find this it's kind of a newer stove um, but i like it it's flat and you can put a griddle across to it, whatever you want to on it And it's got an electronic start. You can see it or not, you can hear it. Started right up. So I like that feature. And um, the body of this is about eight foot long, four foot wide, and about two foot tall. And uh, so it's a little slender than the last one they built, but a little longer. So it's really about the same cubic feet overall um, on it. And again, there's the wing doors, folded open. I'm gonna kick on the water heater. Sometimes it takes a minute for it to kick on, especially just after you turn the gas on. And it'll sit there for a, maybe a minute, but it should kick on and start heating the water. Oh. Hopefully you heard that. So it's kicked on and going, and it only it only takes if you just want it on warm water. It only takes about five ten minutes, and you've got warm water. If you want it super hot, you know it'll it'll be on for like 15, 20 minutes, getting it to that point on there. So it's a torsen axle, which boy, there's a lot of discussion out in the world about different kinds of axles and stuff. And uh, I went with this. It's an easier ride. You know, I'm, I'm looking that my clientele is going to be more of the um, smaller vehicles. Obviously, this is suited for a hunter's vehicle or Jeeps or like that. But I'm not really promoting the off-road part of this. Um, it, it can certainly be adapted to that. But and it is built strong, that frame. A lot of steel in it. Um, but for now, I'm going with the torsen axle and... Uh, and the about a 30 inch tire on there and uh, it's about a 3800 pound axle so it uh, carries a lot of weight more weight than you know if we put in this thing and um, it weighs dry weight on this is about 1150 pounds it's got a 30 gallon water tank so there's 250 pounds approximately of weight you would add to this um, and you know if you're gonna put an ice cooler in here and sleeping bags and groceries you're probably adding 200 250 pounds of weight that way to it just kind of depends on how you like the camp um, so you know you probably in the 1500 to 1600 pound range without a rooftop tent and awning and with a rooftop tent and awning um, you're probably gonna be you know pushing around 1,800 pounds total weight. So a lot of vehicles, you know, they're kind of rated at 2,000 pounds. Uh, so it could definitely tow that. I'd probably, if it's going to be a Subaru or something like that, I'm sure I'm thinking it's going to be uh, something that's going to need brakes on it. This one does not have brakes on it, but it can easily have brakes put, put on it. And it is beautiful out here today. 
I got to do more October camping. This is pretty cool. So I don't know what I'm forgetting. I'm glad to be back to building these. I'm going to be building them one at a time. If somebody wants to build me to build one for them, I'm just going to build it, kind of custom build it for them. And uh, that's just kind of my goal at the moment, just one at a time. Uh, and I can build them fairly quickly. And I hope to have them out there and uh, available to people again. So if you want to get a hold of me, my website is in the process of being rebuilt. And, uh, you know, getting some of these pictures I'm going to be taking today and videos up on it. And uh, But you can get a hold of me at 360-433-7519. That's 360-433-7519. Seventy-five, nineteen. you can call or text me on that and i'll be glad to talk to you about one if you'd like us to build one i'm definitely going to look at uh this is kind of maroon it has gray phylon on top the fiberglass you know most rvs use um definitely put some diamond plate on the front if i wanted to i'm going to see how this one acts without it um the sides are actually the phylon that i just painted the marine paint maroon not marine and uh Kind of got a WSU look to it, even though that was not in my intention. Uh, kind of turned out that way. But, you know, the file line comes in black, white, gray, and tan. Um, so I can just go with that and not paint the sides or something or change up two-tone like this one is. I think the next one I'm going to start building, I'm just going to start building it. And if somebody comes along and wants to buy it before I'm done, I'll add whatever color they want to, to it. But I might use aluminum different colors on the side. I think I'm going to go with a bright yellow. I'm not sure what the other part of it will be, but maybe that bumblebee look, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, all right, that's it. I'm babbling on here. I'm excited to be out here and uh, showing you the new VentrePod. And this is Barney, and I'm out of here.